What do you expect is next for Dame for the trip? Well, I think Woj said that perfectly, which is Damian Lillard has indicated to everyone he wants to be in Portland. He would like them to improve the team. And so there, he's giving them every opportunity to do so. The question is, how long can he give them? Mm -hmm. Is it the start of free agency? Is it all the way through free agency? How long does he give them to noticeably in to improve the team? And by the way, there are other free agents that are waiting on his answer and thought process yeah. too. Jeremy Grant would like to know. Right. Right? The, if the Blazers are going to make any trades, some of the players involved in those trades, there's there's a Yusuf Nurkic, Amphrey Simons, Jaden Sharp. There's a lot of players who would be involved here. And so, as Woj said, is the rest of the league sitting around going about their business and, and waiting on Dame? That, that's what every franchise has to answer. And I think the question is, are you in that discussion yep. uh, for Damian Lillard or are you just going to sit back and let him be on his own timetable depending on how closely you are affected? Right by his decision because it impacts who wants to come yeah. back to Portland if people want to go to wherever Damian Lillard would end up being Zach we know that the Portland Trailblazers they put out a statement yesterday saying that they all met that they're committed to building a winner around Damian Lillard what do they need to get back into that playoff picture that's been evading them very simple they need more veteran help whether it's on the wing where they're extremely yeah. young around Dame with Shade and Sharp and Scoot Henderson who can play both guard positions and Anthony Simons, maybe an upgrade at center, but they're going to need an infusion of veteran talent somewhere, whether it's trade, free agency, they should have the full mid-level exception. They can re-sign some of their own guys like Matisse Steibel. A combination of all those things, they're going to need to find two, three, four more contributors because right now they're young and they're a little bit thin. They have a pathway. It's a really difficult needle to thread, but they have a pathway to being a good playoff team in the Western Conference trotting this middle road where they keep Dame and they keep most of their young guys, but they're going to have to hit on a lot of signings and get lucky like any other team. It's, it's going to be very, very difficult to build a true blue contender this way, mm. but it's worth a shot if, if and as long as all the main parties involved actually want to do it. Right, namely Damian Lillard. But yeah. Zach, Perk this morning, he was... <laughs> Fired up, shall we say, on the production call. I understand that you have a pep talk for the Trailblazers, so I'm just going to give you the floor, Perk. Yeah. Ah. He cleared his throat. Oh, you my ready? gosh. No, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Bring so, it on. So, I'm nervous. So here, here's, the, here's the thing. We keep talking about the trades and what moves need to be made and what big name could go to Portland and pair alongside <laughs> Damian Lillard. And here's the fact of the matter. It was two teams that put the world on notice last this past season. And one of them was the Sacramento Kings, mm -hmm. and led by De'Aaron Fox and uh, Sabonis. You had Mike Brown develop their culture. When I look at the Portland Trailblazers, it's not a big leap. They're on the same level as the Sacramento Kings when you look at them from a talent basis. Anthony Simons, uh, Grant, if they re-sign him back, those guys are studs. And when those big three, when the big three of the Portland Trailblazers were healthy, they were a problem early in the season. And then moving to Miami, they didn't have a lot of household names. They just shocked the world in the Eastern Conference, knocking off the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics with guys like Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, Caleb Martin. So what I think about the Portland Trailblazers, I'm like, yes, add some veterans to the bench. Maybe look at a Marcus Morris and see what his situation with the Wizards is looking like. But Chauncey Billups, challenge yourself to have the locker room and Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons believe that they could get it done. Challenge your player development that they could believe that they could develop these young guys and trust the system that you could actually make a run into the postseason. So what it showed me this past postseason, it don't matter if you're a household name. It don't matter if you have another all-star caliber player alongside of you. Can you get your organization and culture right that they believe in themselves and each other so that you can make a run in the postseason? So I'm challenging Chauncey Billups along with Damian Lillard to gather his young troops 
along with the veterans he already have, to go out there and do what Sacramento did and Miami Heat did this past season, and that's to put the world on notice. Well, I mean, Damian Lillard, four years, $216 million left on his contract, but, you know, Jimmy Butler had Bam on a bio. Yeah. Uh, DeMontis Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox, all, you know, so I get what you're saying, Perk. It's the talent meeting the mindset yeah. that needs to happen here in Portland. I do want to shift to another mm -hmm. team in the Western Conference, the Clippers, because take a look at their future outlook here. Both Kawhi and Paul George, they are under contract for next season, but they hold player options after the season. And they don't actually have control of any first-round picks <laughs> until 20. 27. So, Zach, you've seen the Clippers as a win-now team for a while now. You've been talking about that all year. What exactly is at stake for them here? Yeah, they've been win-now ever since that day in Las Vegas where there was yep. a literal earthquake in Kawhi Leonard and Paul George <laughs> went that. to the Clippers. Look, sometimes, sometimes the calendar and the timetable of contracts tells you everything you need to know. And the timetable is... Kawhi Leonard is eligible for a max contract extension in July. Paul George is eligible for a max contract extension in September. Four-year extensions, I believe, if Bobby Marks, if I'm remembering his analysis correctly. If those guys walk in the door after playing less than half of the games together in four seasons and ask, respectively, for ironclad four-year max extensions, I just don't believe the Clippers can say yes. I just don't think those guys have been available enough to do that. And then a negotiation begins. Would you do a two plus one? Would you take less than the max? Is there any way we can price in the fact that you have just not been available? And the minute those conversations start, Oof. they either go well or they go badly. And if they go badly, it's a ticking time bomb, and this is just the calendar. This is just what the contracts say. We're just going to have to see what happens, but the time is now for this team and these players to decide kind of where they want to go for the next few years. Well, if they stay, that's also an issue because it gets very expensive for two players in their thir in their 30s will go that'll go into their their, their mid to late 30s on those kind of deals. And so the Clippers though, they have a lot of attractive expiring contracts. I think their plan is continue to build around Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, but the mix around them needs to change because even when they were healthy, they weren't good enough last year. Right. And the fact of the matter is they're 39 million <laughs> above the tax oh. perk and their free agents are Russell Westbrook and Mason Clubling. Go ahead. And guess who guess what else is in danger? Them losing one of the best coaches in the game in Ty Lu. And if I'm Ty Lu, he also have an inspiring contract coming up, expiring contract coming up. And I would not sign an extension. I would not, Ty Lu, don't do it. Because <laughs> there's other organizations that you could go out there and and your players will be available. I would not do it. They in danger of losing one of the best coaches in the game. Three years, Ramona? Two years left at under years team left. control. Two years left under team control. We're going to get into the Clippers a little bit more later in this show because, as Zach Lowe said, potentially one of the biggest looming questions in free agency is the Los Angeles Clippers. So what do they need to do to make sure that those questions are answered? Started the show with him, and understandably so. But don't forget about the Eastern Conference because the reigning conference champs, they have big questions. What does the future hold for Gabe Vincent, for Max Struess? How about the 2021 champions? Will Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez be back? And James Harden, he has a decision to make. And then the Celtics, will they offer Jalen Brown a super max extension? The questions, though, they do not stop there. Our Tim Bontemps, he has more. Let's start with the team Denver beat in the NBA Finals the Miami Heat. For decades under Pat Riley, Miami has consistently chased stars. I'm going to bring a championship to Miami, I promise. Not two, not three, not four, not five. After a magical playoff run came up short against a more talented Nuggets team, the expectation is the Heat will do so once again. But will it work? And whether it does or not, what will happen with Gabe Vincent and Max Struess, the starting backcourt of Miami's finals team this spring, as both become free agents. Then there are the three teams that ruled the East in the regular season. The Bucks and 76ers already changed coaches this offseason. Now, they enter free agency with big questions. Will Milwaukee re-sign Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez? And will Philadelphia 
bring back James Harden. James has a decision to make. I'd be very happy if he came back. Boston, on the other hand, has already begun reshaping its roster with the stunning move to send out Marcus Smart, the heart and soul of the Celtics and their longest tenured player for Chris Stapp's Porzingis. As the Celtics clearly decided the status quo wasn't going to deliver Boston its elusive 18th championship banner. The Celtics now have to decide whether they're going to give Jalen Brown the biggest contract extension in the history of the NBA, as well as what to do with restricted free agent forward Grant Williams. The questions, however, don't stop there. Cleveland desperately needs to find an upgrade at its starting small forward spot. Toronto has Fred Van Vliet and Jakob Pertl both hitting free agency, with Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi both one year away from it. Amid so many questions, here's the only certain thing. It's going to be one wild summer. The East is full of talented players who could be on the move. Thank you, Tim Bontemps, for that essay. James Harden has his player option. That could be the biggest domino, but don't sleep on the heat. The importance of Gabe Vincent, who started during yep. this finals run. So let's start right there in Miami, Ramona, um, because as Tim Bontemps detailed in that essay, he said that, look, mm -hmm. Miami has a, a history here of chasing stars, but what are their plans for this offseason? Well, look, they, they got to the finals because Jimmy Butler went, went on a run and they gelled. And if you would have seen them at the end of the regular season, you would not have seen that, right? But I think they are the team that's in the spot where if Dame Lillard ends up asking for a trade, they need to sit and be in, right, in the right position there. But they also cannot wait and not try to upgrade their team. And I think what we saw throughout the regular season is that this team can do it during a short playoff run, but they don't have the guys to be available all season long. And, and you know, that's where they need to upgrade and just fill in yep. in the backcourt. Of course, Damian Lillard said it was a coincidence that he was playing well in Miami, but... That was the DJ in Paris. Yeah, it was the DJ was... in Paris, just so happened to do it, but, but take for that what you will. What, what do you want to see happen in Miami, Perk? You know what? One, I would like to see them maybe persuade Russell Westbrook to come in for a little less money and, and take over that point guard spot. I think him attacking downhill with the shooting that they have available would open up a lot and do wonders for Bam out of the bio. But their number one op their number one thing is to make sure that they get Gabe Vincent re-signed. I believe that Gabe Vincent could be one of the best six mans in the NBA coming in off that bench. I love the way that he plays off the ball. I love his ability to create for himself and others offensively and defensively. He's a damn pest. He's one of the few guys that love to pick up 94 feet. He embraces that heat culture. You know what you're going to get out of him on a consistent basis. He's not scared of the moment. And again, you bring him back, he's a valuable piece and a great six man to come in off your bench and you know what you're going to get on both ends of the floor, night in and night out. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.